Hey everybody, how's it going? Before I get into the topic of today's video, I wanna make a couple of things as clear as I can. This is not investment advice. I am not a financial services professional. This is purely my opinion. I am not good when it comes to financial advice. This is not my field. I am a MacBook motherboard repair person. If I were good with financial advice, I would not be living in the same apartment that I lived in 11 years ago. I would be living in my mansion across the street from Whole Foods. Vanderstein Model 7 on that side of my 2,000 square foot living room, TLCS 3.7 on this side of my 2,000 square foot living room. Alas, I am not a financial services professional, nor am I someone who knows how to make money in that sense, which is why I live in the same crappy bed apartment that I lived in 11 years ago, sitting in front of my fake flowers. That being said, I want to give my opinion on a couple of matters in this video. Some of this is going to be pure speculation based on slim evidence, which you can give me your opinion on down below. So this is going to be about the whole GameStop short thing that's been going on for, uh, for the last week or so. Now, what I discussed in my last video, which is 30 minutes, and I'm not going to repeat the entire thing here, the TLDR is that GameStop appears to be going up as a result of a short squeeze. So you have hedge funds that were betting on the stock going down. You bet on the stock going down by short selling. So you, you borrow shares now, you sell them now, and if you think the stock price is going to go down, you buy the shares that you borrowed later. Well, you're paying interest on the borrowed shares, but if you think the stock's going to go from $10 to $1, you can make 9 bucks a share. If, you, if it goes down to a dollar next week and you buy in. That, I believe, was the mindset of the institutional investors. This is a strategy that can work. You know, people think Bed Bath & Beyond is going to go down, so they short it. The difference is that with Bed Bath & Beyond, they didn't get too greedy. Bed Bath & Beyond, I believe, is shorted somewhere between 50 to 70% of the overall shares. With GameStop, they got over 120% of available shares shorted. How do you even do that? That's a question for the actual financial services professionals. There are people that believe this could be naked short selling, which in some cases I believe is actually illegal. But the point here is that the institutional investors and hedge funds got so greedy that rather than stop when the 60 or 70 or 80% of the shares shorted, they got up to over 120%. Now, what does that mean? So if they think the stock is going to go from 10 to 4, that means that they short sell now, borrow the shares, they get their $10 a share, and then they buy back in at $4 a share next week. But if you take up all the shares and it doesn't necessarily go down as quickly as you want, when you need to cover, which is when you buy back the shares... If there's no shares for you to buy, the laws of supply and demand kick in. If the supply is here and the demand is here, the price goes up, and that's why it spiked. GameStop, in my opinion, is not spiking because of the fundamentals of the company, because they are selling more games than they did last week, or because they have a crazy amount more cash flow now than they did a year ago. I believe that the share price is spiking because of this basic math equation that a company uh, hedge funds shorted over 120% of the available shares, meaning that there is a guarantee that they will have to buy back in regardless of what the price is. And that's why it's going up so much. Now, this was a news article that I read this morning. And this is, uh, in my opinion, I believe that this is bullshit. And I would like to explain why I believe this article is bullshit. Okay, so here it says GameStop skeptics, Citron, Melvin succumbed to epic short squeeze. Succumb. That means that they probably bought or they covered, right? So they're no longer short. Melvin Capital and Citron Capital closed out of their short positions on GameStop Corp as the firm succumbed to the stock's meteoric ascent. Melvin Capital closed its position after repositioning its portfolio, according to a spokesperson. At a loss, so, so this is the part that I think is important. Now, they claim that they closed their short position. I don't see how that's how how that is something that can be possible. And this is pure rank speculation on my part. I am not making this as a statement of fact. They have an interest in saying they closed their position. Why do they have an interest in saying they closed their position? Well, I think that that's because they think people are buying into GameStop because they believe that since they have a short position in it, that that means they're going to have to cover, and when they cover, the stock is going to go up. If people believe that Melvin Capital and other hedge funds already covered their positions, that means it's not going to go up anymore, it's going to go down. If people believe it's going to go down, they will sell. If people sell, the price will go down, and if the price goes down, then Melvin Capital will be able to cover at a price that does not bankrupt their entire hedge fund. So they have a reason to get you to think that they are not shorting it anymore, 
even if they are. Again, I don't have proof that this is a statement of fact, nor do I have proof that what it says in this Bloomberg article is bullshit. I'm simply stating that there is an incentive structure there for them to get you to believe they're no longer shorting it, because if you believe they're no longer shorting it, you will sell. If you sell, they will get to buy back in at a lower price, and they will avoid this entire mess and misery of going bankrupt and then having to explain to all their customers that we lost billions of your dollars and and get sued and uh, the SEC uh, destroy them and so on and so forth. Now, when I take a look at what's been going on here, firstly, if they sold out of their short position, first, this is just ba basic stuff here. So if they sold out of their short position, then why is it still going up from the 130s area to the 220 area? That doesn't make sense. I don't believe that solely retail investors, just Robinhood people buying in, are going to cause that. I imagine that that would be something that would be caused by a short squeeze. Secondly, the post-market volume did not appear to be high enough to cover the amount of shorting that has been done to this stock. I don't think that even if they bought in post-market, even if they they didn't cover it yesterday, they covered it in the market uh, pre-market today or post-market yesterday, I personally, in my opinion, I do not believe that they purchased enough of it to cover their entire position. Third, this could be weasel words over here. If you take a look, it says they, they uh, closed out of their short position. How much of their short position? 1%? 2%? 8%? 100%? If I say I closed out of my position in ICLN, does that mean that I closed out one share, five shares, 10 shares, 100 shares? Third, when you read certain articles that regarding this particular firm, this is, has nothing to do with GameStop. It says Evotech shares ride amid speculation Melvin Capital closing short positions. It says over here that they do not discuss their positions. Melvin Capital, Founded in 2014 by Gabriel Plotkin, said it does not comment on positions in trading. This is not an old news article. This is a news article from today, 3.45 a.m. So in a modern news article, they say they don't comment on their positions. So if they don't comment on their positions, then what's going on with this Bloomberg article? Are you not? Is that not a comment on your position? Is that just someone in PR saying something to try to get the stock to go down? Or did you break your own rule? And when you actually look at the amount of short interest, and there's many of these different websites that will show you short interest, I imagine this one will update once the uh, once the market opens. It is currently 9, 12 a.m., so it ha probably hasn't updated yet. It says short float, 140%. You have other sites that go over the amount of shorting that's going on here, and I don't believe that they have managed to close out their short position. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense based on the sheer amount that was shorted that they closed out all of their stuff post-market yesterday. I, on pre-market or even post-market yesterday. Pre-market yesterday, I don't believe that they closed out because if they closed out pre-market yesterday, that would have meant that it would have probably went up a lot more. I don't, and even if they claim that they b b did post market, that could have been what caused a little bit of the jump, but the volume is not enough for me to be convinced that they closed out their entire short position. Even if they did close out their short position in full, which I don't personally believe is the case at this time, there's still a hell of a lot of shorting going on in the stock, and I'm kind of curious who are the other firms involved that are shorting it. Uh, that's pretty much it, though. That's that's my thoughts. That's my opinion here. Again, this is not investment advice. This is purely rank speculation. This is just MacBook repair person angrily reading a Bloomberg article, which has been a theme of this channel over the past coming months. Also, I know a bunch of people are going to say, Lewis, why don't you do board repair videos? We want to see board repair videos. We don't come. You don't come here for this. No, no you don't. No, you don't. Just, just, just don't lie to me. Just don't lie. It's just stop virtue signaling. Can you do me a favor and stop virtue signaling? That, that's all I ask. I Say whatever you want. All I ask is that you be honest with me. I log into the same YouTube studio app every single day, and I read the same damn alert every time I post something that has even anything to do with right to repair or board repair. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I still make them. I will still make them on a regular basis, but let, let's just be real with each other. You are saying that because it makes you feel better. You're not here for board repair videos. You're here to watch me scream at Bloomberg or post a video of my cat or talk about how Cuomo is a jackass. Just, just be honest with ourselves. Anyway, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.